Borders now and there has been unrest in Burundi since about April or so. That's when the incumbent president announced his decision to bid for a third term in office. Opponents say President Pierre Nkurunziza must go as the constitution limits him to two terms. But his supporters say he is eligible for a third term in office because he was chosen by lawmakers and not popularly elected for his first term in 2005. While well, the strife has seen over 100 people die in the street protests that erupted there, as well as an attempted military coup, which was quickly put down. Well, since independence from Belgium back in 1961, Burundi has had four coups and a civil war that killed an estimated 250,000 people. The SABC News team covering the elections include contributing editor Vuyam Vogel, who joins us now live. Vuyam, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. I suppose the first question, violence overnight just before the elections. We heard of blasts and we understand about three people dead. What has happened since overnight? Well, no incidents uh, really reported overnight. You'll recall that uh, polls closed in the afternoon and uh, the counting started in uh, earnest. And overnight, as I say, no incidents reported. But that's, of course, not to say that nothing has happened. But uh, we haven't had anything thus far. We're expecting results uh, um, tomorrow, as early as tomorrow, because it is probably the least complicated of uh, Burundi's four-part um, election, the presidential election that took place that is so so far so good. Yes, there have been complaints. I mean, a couple of people died um, yesterday uh, but uh, investigations are still going on as to whether there's a direct link between those people and the election related violence. So, so far, no incidents and everyone is waiting with bated breath for the outcome of that result of uh, yesterday's poll, which we are told we should expect as early as tomorrow. Now, before we discuss further the aftermath of the voting process, I suppose let's go back to yesterday and talk about the scenes that we saw there during voting day. Could you tell us about the, 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 the atmosphere that prevailed there, the voter turnout? What do we know about yesterday? Well, we don't know much, if anything, about the voter turnout just yet. But from the diplomats uh, we spoke to last night, they predict a fairly good turnout, um, which was the same turnout that was predicted by the Electoral Commission. Because from the Electoral Commission's point of view, um, the situation in the run-up to yesterday's poll was much, much more conducive compared to um, a, the sort of same atmosphere in the run-up to last month's parliamentary elections. So if you listen to what uh, uh, the observers and the diplomats and what the uh, Electoral Commission predicted, there is a fair degree or amount uh, of consistency. But uh, what actually pertained, we will only hear from the Electoral Commission, hopefully later today. Now, of course, as you've just uh, mentioned, that the outcome of these elections, we still don't know. But if we may speculate just a tad, uh, some analysts are suggesting that incumbent President Pierre Ngorunziza is likely to win the third term in office. What are you hearing from the ground from perhaps those people who have educated guesses? I mean, that is certainly uh, the prediction. Uh, people are unanimous on that, including um, the opposition. I mean, President Nkurunziza is expected to win, hands down, by a very, very wide margin. But of course, uh, if you speak to the key or the main or the biggest opposition parties, they will tell you that they never had time to canvas. The atmosphere was, never, was neither free nor fair. They never had a chance to go to the people, speak to them, uh, talk to them about what they stand for and what they are promising the people of Burundi. So uh, to them, it is no uh, a surprise that uh, President Pierre Nkurunziza will win this election. And what they are asking for, certainly from the leader um, of uh, the main opposition party, the biggest opposition party, says uh, up until uh, Burundi uh, gets the kind of atmosphere that is ideal for everyone to campaign freely, uh, he was complaining 
mentioned, for example, about not even being able to go to church. Uh, he will be followed by armies of soldiers and intelligence officers who want to know what he's doing. So he thinks that uh, there is not a chance in hell for any opposition leader to campaign freely in this country. And for as long as that happens, uh, President Pian Korunziza will uh, continue to be the president of the country for as long as he wants. But that, of course, is the view of the opposition. Um, the, 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 the main party, the official, uh, the party that's running this country, the CNDD, FDD, will tell you that it is purely because they are doing their work and President Korunziza is the most popular presidential candidate by far. And these people are mere, merely want a negotiated settlement that will see them uh, securing positions for, themse for, for themselves, positions that they cannot get through the ballot. All right, let's leave it there, at least for now. William Vogo, our contributing editor, coming to us live from Burundi. We'll continue to uh, cross to him throughout the course of the show, getting a regular update on what's happening there on the ground. Thank you so much again, William.